Hi, I'm Shayna, owner of Silverware by Shayna. I'm a silverware artist, and today I'm going to show you how to make a heart. Those two teaspoons I'm holding are called Jubilee, made by International Silver, made in 1953, and they are silver plated. When I make hearts, I like to use Sharpies to mark out where I'm actually going to cut. So I crisscross them and then mark a line of where I'd like to cut. Now, when you're done doing the lines, you put them next to each other, and it looks like a giant V. And that is the shape that you want. Next up, you're just going to cut them. I'm using my Beverly Throatless Shear. You do not need a shear for this. You can use bolt cutters, a jeweler saw, a band saw. You have a lot of options, but I prefer the shear. When you're cutting your pieces, all you're doing is cutting the line that you drew. But once you cut them, and depending how you cut them, you might have some wonky edges that you need to sand. For sanding, I prefer using my belt sander. But before you even consider sanding anything, you want to put some lung protection and some eye protection on. Those are kind of important. All right, so now you're gonna turn your sander on and just start sanding that sad edge away. Now when you're sanding, you wanna hold it as flat as you can so that it's flush with the other piece. Now, sanding it this way isn't going to make it completely flat and perfect, but it's gonna work for what we're doing. You're gonna do the same thing to the other side and just do your best. Once you're done sanding, line your hearts up and see if they fit okay. Next up is the soldering. Again, save your lungs, get a fume extractor. For this piece, I'm just using lead-free solder and this soldering paste. With this solder, you don't need a whole bunch of heat for it, which is very convenient so you're not melting off your plating. For this piece, I'm just using this little baby butane torch. It's, it's pretty much a souffle torch. It doesn't get hot enough for silver, but it'll definitely burn you. We're going to be soldering on this soldering block. As you can see, it's uh, definitely been through some stuff. I prefer to cut off my solder. I just think it's easier that way. And then you just flux it. You're just putting the flux pretty much where you just sanded. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do need flux on the piece. Once you've gooped that on, you are now going to try to center it the best you can so that they're touching. I like to use tweezers to put my solder on. You're just putting it on where you sand it also. Just do your best. I have giant man hands and use tweezers though. All right, so just grab your torch, turn it on, and just start heating away and watch it melt. Now your piece might move a little bit. Normally I would use a pick, but I have no idea where it went, so I'm using my tweezers just to align it better so that my solder flows better. Shortly after I stop soldering, you are going to notice the smoke, and that is where the extractor comes in handy. Again, save your lungs. Once you're done soldering, you are just going to let it sit. Some people like to dip it in water. I prefer just to wait. Now I'm just doing a sturdy test. Just throw it on the ground. This is just me checking out to make sure it's not going to break while someone's wearing it. Normally I put these in a tumbler, but this works also. See that little gap at the end? We're going to sand that off. So you're just going back to your trusty sander and then just making it nice and smooth. In between the smoothness though, you want to check to see if it's still sharp in some spots. It can get spicy at some times. Metal with sanders and it gets kind of hot. So just be careful and if it gets too spicy, put it down and just wait a while. Or you can dip it in water and dry it off, but that's a whole process. But that's the finished heart, sanded. Next up is steel wool to clean it. You can also use pickle, but since I'm working with one piece, steel wool it. Why not? This is fine steel wool. It's the finest you can typically get, but you just rub all the nasty away. All right, so now she's all clean. We're almost done. We just got to put a hole up in there. That tool I'm holding is what you would call a vintage hole punch. They've been around for years and they work amazingly. You could also use a drill press, but since I'm only working with one piece, this works great. It's a very simple tool to use, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and then you make a hole and you're done. Now, depending on how much you use this and what kind of materials you use it on, it's very easy to break them also. Now, I'm just putting a little stainless jump ring on there so it can stay onto a necklace. My husband loves these. They're all over our house. And then when you're all done with that, you're just going to slap it on a necklace and you got yourself a nice little heart pendant silverware heart thing. How cute. 